can get as much SPF as you want, go as high as you want, but remembering to reapply that two hours is critically important. The majority of people don't put enough sunblock on in the first place and they don't reapply. So SPF 30 or higher and just remember to reapply and enough sunscreen, remembering a palm full for your body each time. Skin cancer is the most common of all cancer types. According to the American Cancer Society, more than 5 million skin cancers are diagnosed each year in the U.S. That's more than all other cancers combined. Skin cancer rates are also on the rise over the past few decades. However, a K-State Research and Extension Northwest Regional Family Consumer Sciences Specialist says there's a lot we can do to protect ourselves and our families from skin cancer. On today's Sound Living, Outdoor Skin Protection. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman. Ashley Swatty says applying sunscreen, seeking shade, and wearing sun protective clothing are just a few of the ways that we can protect ourselves while outdoors. Ashley, one of the things that we often forget about is just really the need when we're outside for protection. And I guess along that line, we really think of sunscreen to begin with. Yes, yeah. Sunscreen is so incredibly important when we think about protecting our skin health. And especially now when a lot more people are getting outdoors, summer is right around the corner, we're getting out into the fields, we're getting to go play at the lakes and at the swimming pools. And so we really need to keep sun protection in the back of our mind every day. When we're thinking about sun protection, I know we see the tubes of stuff and they've got all these SPF and certain numbers on them. What exactly does all of that mean and what should we be looking for? Yeah, there are three to four basic things that we need to look for when choosing a sunscreen. There are lotions and sprays. And so when you're choosing between a lotion and a spray, I recommend just choosing whatever is going to work with your family and whatever you're going to use. If you buy one kind and you don't use it, it's not going to do anybody any good. So we want to make sure that we're looking for broad spectrum protection, which means that a sunscreen is going to protect our skin from both UVA and UVB rays, and both of those can cause cancer. Then when we look at those SPF numbers, we want to make sure we're getting an SPF of 30 or higher And this SPF number is how well a sunscreen protects you from sunburn. Then we want to make sure that it is water resistant or very water resistant. But we have to remember that sunscreens are not waterproof or sweat proof. So a biggie here is that we have to remember to reapply every two hours. And then make sure that we're looking at the expiration date and not using our sunscreen if it has passed that date. And also, as part of this reapplying process, need to keep in mind that this is not total protection, right? Yes, yes. No matter how many SPFs you want to get to, sunscreen is not going to save you 100% from those rays. So what we recommend is to seek shade between the times of 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., wear UPF clothing, making sure that you're covered as much as you can, wearing a hat, specifically a wide-brimmed hat, wearing sunglasses, and you also want to wear sunscreen. But the biggest factor there is seeking shade. So if you're outside and you're wondering if those rays are really strong, you can use the shadow test. So if you look down and see your shadow and it's shorter than what you are, then it's time to seek shade and protect yourself from that harmful sun. And is it just getting out of the sun for a while, or is this something that we need to be doing every couple of hours? We need to keep out of the sun as as much as we can. You know, protect ourselves as much as we can. I understand if we're out working in the field, we have to, and there are many people who have outdoor jobs. So seek shade as much as you can, but if you can't, then wear sunscreen, wear your wide brim hat, protect those eyes with sunglasses, and wear UPF protection clothing. Yeah, I think of all the summers we spent at soccer matches and baseball games and things like that, and a lot of times you could tell that people were really not protecting themselves. No, no, exactly. And now that I've 
I've been researching this more and, you know, everybody's aging, but it's really important to start focusing on our skin health and even at a young age. And there is a statistic that skin cancer is the most common cancer in the United States, and it only takes one blistering sunburn during childhood or adolescence to nearly double a person's chance of developing melanoma. So even when we're younger, we have to be mindful of the sun's rays. So as adults, we have to be role models and help protect those kids and babies. Yeah, you mentioned babies, and I think really basically they're saying trying to keep them out of the sun for up to maybe six months. Yes, sunscreen isn't recommended for babies under six months old, so keep them out of the sun as much as possible. Yep, you're exactly right. You mentioned clothing and hats and that sort of thing. I think I'm seeing more and more when I look at some of the tags, especially on golf wear, that some of the clothing actually has this SPF in it. Yeah, it is a ultraviolet protection factor, and they are usually on the labels. And they're making more clothes, as you know, and even sun swimsuits with that UPF label on them. So one thing that I would encourage you, if, if you do have kids or even for yourself, is to let your kids choose a rash guard style of swimsuit for more protection and one that they'll actually wear. So tell me a little bit about that swimsuit. I'm not familiar with that. A rash guard is a long sleeve swimsuit that just offers more protection than one that usually has all of your skin showing. And I'm seeing more and more of those as, you know, people are becoming more sun protection aware. I guess along those same lines, when we're just out working, I know it seems odd to want to wear long sleeves and long pants, but actually that's what gives you the protection, right? Yes, and if your clothes don't specifically say UPF or if they're made for the sun, if you hold them up to the light or in the sun and sun is shining through, we don't want to recommend those. We want to look for the clothing that doesn't allow sun to penetrate through. I kind of remember when we were putting sunscreen on our kids, we would always hit certain spots a little bit more often, kind of the top of the ears, the back of the neck, sometimes on the elbows. Is that still something they recommend is hitting some of those kind of higher, I guess, visibility areas? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, we just we just kind of think of, all right, I got my arms, I got my legs, I got my face. But, you know, the sun is getting us everywhere. We can't really hide from the sun unless we are indoors. So the top of your head, unless you have a hat on, your ears, especially your face, your neck, under your arms. Sometimes we don't think about that on our hands, on our feet, and especially reapplying when we are out swimming in the lake or in a pool. If you need a reminder for that reapplication, if your pool doesn't have breaks, set a timer on your phone. That reapplying is such a big factor in how well our sunscreen is going to protect us from the sun. We also need to remember that there is that reflection off the water as well. Yes, and protecting our skin year-round. This isn't just a summer issue. We should be wearing sunscreen every day, all year round. With the snow, the snow is going to reflect. And, you know, if there's snow on the ground and we want to wear our sunglasses because it's really bright, well, the sun is reflecting onto our skin too. And so not just in the summer, we have to be sun protection aware all year round. So this is really not necessarily the intensity of the sun in terms of temperature. It's really how the rays impact us? Yes, correct. It's how the rays shine down on us. And it could even be a cloudy day. It could be a nice, cool, cloudy day. But those rays are still coming down on us. So I encourage you to wear your sunscreen every day. I actually talked to somebody the other day about the fact that they were at a track meet and it was cloudy and it was cool, the wind was blowing, and they thought about putting on the sunscreen and thought, nah, I'm going to be okay. And then the next day, they recognized the red on the face. So it happens in all kinds of conditions. Oh, yeah. Yes. And you, you really do have to get in that habit of, all right, if you haven't purchased your sunscreen, purchase it and then keep it with you and keep it handy. And some people might not be putting on enough sunscreen 
or not at all. So just getting in the habit of putting on your sunscreen and putting on enough. And when we're out swimming, you want to put on about an ounce. So how much is an ounce? Well, it's roughly about a palm full, and this should be enough to help cover our arms, legs, neck, and face. I got to assume this is kind of one of those things where if you're not sure, maybe put on just a little bit more. Yes, exactly. That is a great point. When in doubt, put more on. And, you know, I get asked about those expiration dates and do sunscreens expire and how do I know they've expired? Well, if you're using sunscreen every day and in the correct amount, a bottle really shouldn't last that long. That's kind of impactful for me when I think about it because... Uh, thinking about myself, I do put sunscreen on my face every day, but I should be going through bottles of sunscreen more. So it's really eye-opening when you think about that, about really how much sunscreen you should be going through. Sounds like we need to maybe be looking for the bulk price on this stuff. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. If we're going to be using it as much as we should be, yeah. Get enough for your whole family and be a role model, show your kids and your family members, how to put it on all over and year-round. We should be wearing it every day. And really, this is the parents' responsibility to get the children in the habit of putting this on. I'm sure they're going to be maybe a little bit hesitant at first. They're going to throw a little bit of a fuss. But once they start doing it, I think they'll probably understand why it's necessary. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And once you're a role model as a parent showing them that you actually put it on, and that it's really not that bad. It doesn't take much time to put the sunblock on. You're going to feel a lot better when you don't have a sunburn. And older kids might learn the hard way if they forget to put their sunscreen on. But, yeah, helping them be a role model and physically helping them put it on, reminding them of those areas on top of the ears, on top of the head, helping them do it correctly so that they also get in the habit. This is really something that we do at a younger age so that we don't have problems later in life because we do see that this is something that hits later in life in terms of skin cancer. Yeah, it all starts at a young age. Like a lot of the choices that we make around our health, this is a biggie too that a lot of people just don't really think about and we should keep it in the back of our minds every day. A couple of other things that maybe we should mention is tanning beds and sun lamps. Those really have the same effect, right? Yes. Those are actually even worse. That's a main point to stay away from when we're thinking about our sun protection. I just really encourage people to stay away from the sun lamp, stay away from the indoor tanning. And if we really want to care about our our skin when we get older, stay away from those. You mentioned the SPF, and I know that sometimes these go up to 100 plus. I'm assuming that we want to just kind of read the label and figure out what is maybe best for either the activity that we're doing or the conditions that we're in. Does it really matter? Do we need to buy maybe a couple of different types of SPF numbers? You know, I really just see that they recommend 30 SPF or higher, and they is the American Academy of Dermatology and the American Cancer Society. And the big thing to remember there is you can get as much SPF as you want, go as high as you want, but remembering to reapply that two hours is critically important. The majority of people don't put enough sunblock on in the first place and they don't reapply. So SPF 30 or higher and just remember to reapply and enough sunscreen, remembering a palm full for your body each time. Good information, and if somebody needs more information, how could they find more information? I'd recommend that they go to the American Academy of Dermatology website, the American Cancer Society website, or talking to their board-certified dermatologist. That's K-State Research and Extension Northwest Regional Family and Consumer Sciences Specialist Ashley Swati with tips to protect our skin and reduce the risk of skin cancer. Again, for more information, go to cancer.org slash skin cancer or cancer.org slash sun safety or contact your local county or district extension office. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman, and this is the K-State Radio Network.